Uh, it's been a little bit of a challenge. Um, I just have never expe expected to be attacked, you know, especially since I'm 71 years old. It's like, okay, who wants to attack a 71-year-old woman, right? Um, but I had some bruises on my body after the attack, so that kind of still keeps it reminding me of what happened. And as the bruises fade, you know, hopefully it's going to go away. So I just... I keep on like repeating it in my head thinking, you know, is there anything more that I can think of that would help the police in finding this guy? And um, I put the information out on the, the Nextdoor app with hopes that maybe somebody there might have seen something. And of course they hadn't, you know, they did see the police presence after, but that's it. Um, I'm trying not to blame myself. I know that at first I asked my husband, because when I came home, the police brought me home because I was just too upset to try and walk home. So they brought me home and I asked my husband the way that I was dressed. I said, do I look provocative in any way that would cause somebody to want to attack me? Because, you know, that's kind of like the stereotype, right? <clears throat> and he said, no. And then I got to thinking after, I shouldn't be blaming myself for what happened. It's not my fault. It's, it's the individual that attacked me. You know, that's his problem, not mine. Every time that I walk, I, number one, I have my earbuds in. And from listening to others, I should probably only have one of my earbuds in. And I am hard of hearing. And so I'm constantly, when I do walk, I turn around and I, I look to see, are the, mostly for bicyclists, because they don't always announce themselves when they're coming up. And um, when, when I was walking that day, I did turn around and I did see the guy. Um, I remember vividly seeing him, but didn't think anything of it, right? And then the next thing I know is that I'm being attacked from behind where he put his hands on my breast and I screamed. And at that point he had also thrust himself into me. And when I screamed, then he grabbed me harder. And, and I think that's probably what caused the bruises. So, yeah, it was just, I can't believe this is happening. And when I turned around, I said, you asshole, you know? I said, get back here, and like the guy's gonna come back, right? But it was just my reaction. And I started running after him because I was determined. I wanted to get this guy caught, obviously younger than me and could, you know, run faster. I'd stopped a couple of bicyclists along the way to see if they would at least go follow him. I wasn't asking them to stop him, but nobody was willing to do that, which was kind of disheartening that, that nobody would come to my aid. Mm. Yeah. Your instinct was to go and try to fight. And yeah, 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 definitely. Is that something you feel like is just innate to who you are? That you have yeah, I am a fighter, so I'm a three-time breast cancer survivor. Um, I come from a large family. I was sexually abused as a child. So it's like, yeah, I've got that fighting instinct. I was uh, one of the first female programmers in the United States and computer programmers in California. So it's like, you know, that's all of me just fighting to get ahead. The, you know, the, the, the female part of me, you know, wanting to exceed and, and, and be better than the man out there, if you can say. When you speak to women, your friends, people around your age, has you, you sharing your story and this becoming something that the media and the news has picked up, has it changed their thoughts about how they you know, go out and walk? Well, and a number of them my age in this neighborhood here don't walk by themselves. They walk with somebody else. So that's something that I'm just going to have to do. Me walking is my own little relief factor, you know, being able to get out there by myself. I listen to music or, you know, just being out there. I can go at my own pace. I don't want to be held back by somebody else. So that's why I do it. It's not that I don't want to have friends with me. It's just, it's my time. Yeah. And do you feel like now your time is, that, that time is compromised? Yeah, it is because I actually have not gone to walk since that. And I've got to figure how I do that because I do need to stay physically active. Um, so I don't know, do I walk the block here a number of times? No, that's not fun, you know? I want to also be having fun when I do what I do. So, and I don't want to go to a gym and, and walk an inside track, because again, that's the same thing as just walking around the block. I want to be outside and enjoy the trails that I have for the three years that I've here. They're beautiful trail. And, and Utah, to me, has always had that stigma of being like a very safe, 
crime-free area that we chose to live in more of an older community, but that's changing over time, which I don't have a problem with that at all. Um, because we did come from a big city, we like to see the growth here in, in St. George. I know some people don't, but we like seeing that growth here. How is the police response with you? I know there was a large presence of police, but how has that kind of process been? Yeah, so at first, you know, I had a, a backpack, like a fanny pack on that I had my phone in. So I struggled to get my phone out and, gee, how do I call 911, you know? And I had my earbuds in, so I took my earbuds out and called. And the lady on the phone was very, very helpful, you know, and she said, you know, just just stay with me, we'll get somebody over there. It didn't happen within seconds like it was kind of led to believe. It did take a little while for them to get to me. Um, and then I know at one point they asked me to stop running, um, but it was like, that was another thing that I look at. Had I not stopped running, would I have been able to have seen the guy where he ditched out or whatever, you know, so that's okay. But overall, they were very empathetic. Um, and then they had two female officers that actually talked to me after to get all of the details. But initially, you know, it was a motorcycle cop and not a cop, a policeman. Um, a motorcycle um, guy came by, and then there was a guy that walked with me the back part of the trail so to see if we could find the guy. Okay. So. And does this at all, would you ever consider, you know, carrying a weapon or pepper spray or anything like that? You know, I, I thought about it, and even more recently, my husband's asked me to, you know, like, learn how to um, use a gun, and I just, my ex-husband threatened me a number of times with a gun, so it's kind of like I shy away from that. But um, pepper spray or a stun, something like that, I'm afraid that they would overpower me and then use it on me. Because even though I broke away from this guy, I'm not really that strong. And, you know, I, I am concerned about having to use something like that. I might consider the pepper spray, but again, you know, I think maybe the safest thing for me might be just walking with somebody. Yeah. yeah, I think it can be intimidating, especially for women who have never used anything like this before, for people to say, well, you should have a weapon. It's like, yeah. well, if I don't know how to use a weapon, what value of it is it to me? Yeah, and my husband even suggested maybe I go take a self-defense course. I've been through those before, you know, but it's not what I want to do. I don't want to live my life in fear, and I think carrying those those items is telling me that I have fear with what I'm doing. And I don't want to live like that. Just to make sure that if it does happen to them, that they do report it, because I think that's key. Then maybe we can get more of a police presence out there. A couple of the things that I've thought about is, you know, may, maybe we need to, in some of the key areas, like on the Man of War Bridge, it would have been perfect to have a camera there. I know those things cost, but what about somebody's life? Well, what if that guy, is, his intention was to kill me? You know, having a camera there may have helped it. Don't know. I'm hoping that's not what his intention was, but I think he was just getting, you know, off. But I think also to try and stay as calm as you can, because I kicked myself that I didn't get a better description. Um, but to try and stay calm as much as you can and get as many details as you can to help the police. Because them to try and find somebody, and now mainly based upon black pants and a copper, you know, brown shirt, what does that tell you? You know, you can't go stopping everybody that looks like that. So.